another GCSE economics video brought to you by Mr Goff at mrgoff.com. Today's video will be covering internal economies of scale. Internal economies of scale are advantages that are available to businesses that scale up their production to become big businesses. There's a full list here that we'll be going through individually throughout the course of this video. Now I'm going to start with purchasing economies because these are pretty much the only one that students seem to consistently want to remember. Whenever we say economies of scale, this is the one they tend to think of. It's not that it's not true, it's just that it's only one of nine possible economies of scale. Think about when you've been to the shops. If you look at a chocolate bar, a 200 gram bar of chocolate is more than five times bigger than a small bar of chocolate, but it doesn't cost five times as much. This is quite normal, and as firms grow, the amount they have to pay for the inputs that go into their production can decrease as they're able to negotiate better prices because of the increased quantities that they buy. Larger firms may be able to purchase and use specialist equipment. If you think about the difference between how long it might take you or your local mechanic or the McLaren F1 team to change four tyres, you might see the value of being able to have better equipment. Where firms are able to implement automation, there may be very large efficiency gains to be made. Economies of increased dimension are available to very large firms that ship their goods all over the world. Firms pay for space on huge shipping freighters based on the base size of their containers. This means if a firm doubles the length and width of a container, they pay four times as much for the increased base size, but because the containers are two metres high, the volume has actually increased by eight times. This has led to the development of larger and larger super tankers in a bid for huge multinational firms to be able to reduce their costs. As firms get larger, they're able to divide up their work into separate tasks. This can allow their workers to specialise. Workers that are specialised and do one task repeatedly tend to become more skilled in that specialist area and therefore more efficient. An example of the division of labour can be seen in your local burger restaurant where each of the workers has separate roles. There may be people serving customers, there may be someone else working the drive through someone else may be doing the fry cooking, and someone else may be working on the grill. By combining the efforts of all of these people, a local burger restaurant is able to far more efficiently produce a burger than an individual takeaway where one person has to do everything. Large firms also have a big advantage in their ability to raise funds. These firms are able to issue shares and they're also more likely to have larger profits which they can use to reinvest in their business. In addition, big firms are seen as a lower risk by banks and so they find it easier to secure loans and are also offered better rates for these loans. As firms get larger, it becomes feasible for them to employ specialist managers to maximise the output in their specialised departments. Departments like production, sales, finance, marketing and accounts. This gives these larger firms a big advantage. Consider a small self-employed builder. They might have to take calls about jobs, manage making and receiving payments and their tax obligations all themselves. A larger building firm might employ separate sales and finance people to support their builders. Big firms are able to spend more on marketing because they're able to spread their costs over their many stores. This enables them to use more expensive forms of advertising, such as TV and national newspapers, that reach far more customers. This can give them an advantage over smaller, less well-known competitors. Large firms are able to spread their risk by providing a wider range of goods and services. 
This means that if one area of their business is not performing well, they can still rely on another. An example of this can be seen in UK supermarkets who have greatly expanded the range of services they offer in recent years. Some firms are able to further spread their risk by expanding into foreign markets. Big firms can afford to spend more on research and development. This allows them to continually be innovating new and exciting products that give them an edge in the market. Firms like Apple have been able to use innovation to their advantage, while firms like BHS, who failed to move with the times, have gone out of business. That's all we have time for today. I hope this has helped you to understand the benefits of economies of scale to larger firms. At the moment, you may be thinking that these things are so great that every firm should want to grow, but we haven't covered the full story yet. In the next video, I'll talk to you about diseconomies of scale. Until then, stay well. This has been Mr. Goff from mrgoff.com.